Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and some more holiday cards for my 2024 holiday card series, which I will put a link to the playlist at the end of this video if you want to check it out and see all the other videos I've done so far making holiday cards this year. For today's cards, I'm going pretty much monochromatic, keeping it fairly simple. I am um, going to briefly show the newer Lisa Horton metallic ink pads that everyone's been losing their minds over. <laughs> uh, very briefly. And I just mentioned that because I've had a lot of questions about them because I've you know posted about them when I've seen them come back in stock. And as of doing this voiceover, they're back in stock. Um, I will be using them more. I just kind of just swiped them on the cardstock. We kept it simple. Heat embossing, all the fun things. I still managed to pull some splatter in on all of these cards. And then as always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video. My links are affiliate links. That just means if you click on one of my links, end up placing an order, I get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you. It is what helps pay the bills, keeps the channel going. And that's all I gotta say for the housekeeping. Let's get into making the cards. So I couldn't decide on just one color. <laughs> so I pulled out three different colors of Simon's the Stamp cardstock. I've got Soft Navy, um, Midnight Green. Sorry, my brain just stopped at that one. I was like, Dark Green? <laughs> Midnight Green. And then Schoolhouse Red. And I'm cutting each of these full sheets in half lengthwise. So I'll have my card bases and then panels to use for card front and the main images and this cardstock is eight and a half by 11 so cutting it in half lengthwise makes them four and a quarter by 11 inches and then I'll score them later on in the video to make my card bases so I've got my three a two size panel which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'm going to use one of these big images from the vintage holiday swag stamp set and there's two large images in this set. And I decided I wanted to heat emboss them because one, I love heat embossing. And sometimes, especially for if you're doing, you know, a bunch of holiday cards, you don't want to do a lot of coloring. This is one way to get, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a bang on your cards without spending a lot of time coloring. So I used my anti-static powder tool on the panels of cardstock. And then I'm going to use three different colors of embossing powder because I was just having fun. <laughs> if I was doing like a bunch, I'd probably just, you know, choose a color combo and then like one color of embossing powder. But you guys know me. I like, I like all the colors, all the things, yada, yada, yada. So on the midnight green, I used gold embossing powder. And then on the schoolhouse red, I'm going to use silver embossing powder. And I'm inking up the stamp with clear embossing ink, stamping it more than once rather than, and I talk about this a lot, than pushing really hard on your stamp, especially something one like this. Like this is what I talk about when I say like detail images. This one has a lot of detail and, and especially large stamps where you got a lot of area, ink up, stamp multiple times. That way I get all the detail, I get all the sticky embossing ink down and I'm not like pushing down too hard and getting, you know, mushy areas and losing that detail. So I did the silver, like I said, on the Schoolhouse Red. And then on the Soft Navy, I'm going to use copper embossing powder. And the one I've got is from Tonic. I don't have a link for it, but I'll link to a Ranger copper embossing powder that I'm pretty sure will look the exact same. I haven't used copper in forever, and oh, I really like copper. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's pretty. And any of these embossing powders would look good on any of these cardstocks really so that's what I say about you can kind of do whatever and another option which I didn't think of until as usual after I'm completely done but I was like oh these would look so good on black like just black cardstock to do this whole thing skip using the colors just use black cardstock that would look amazing especially with the gold but really the silver would look amazing the copper would look amazing as usual if I had more time in the day I would have done a set of these in black too <laughs> so anywho once I was done all my embossing, I used my microfiber cloth to buff away that excess anti-static powder because on dark cardstock, 
it likes to cling around and be annoying. So a little bit of elbow grease and just buffing it away so that it's not making everything look weird. And then there is a coordinating die set for this stamp set. It is a large die set because they are large images, but it is what it is. I do like though that it cuts out all around, plus it cuts out like some of the center bits and you know, all the things. So I die cut all of these um, finished images with the coordinating wafer die and then popped out all the little, all the little bits and pieces. And then once these were die cut, I took the other A2 sized panels of the same cardstocks and I'm going to run these through with the fir tree branches embossing folder. This came out a couple years ago. I've done other videos using this. It's one of my favorites. It is a much more subtle pattern than some, you know, when you say like 3D embossing folders. So for these ones, I did not spray my cardstock with water. I've kind of talked about this before. It depends more on the the type of folder, like the type of design. If it's a really like basically if your car if you find your cardstock is cracking when you run it through an embossing folder, mist it with water. Because it generally can kind of sometimes depend on the cardstock, but it also can depend on the folder. And if the design is very um, up and down, it's kind of the easiest way to explain it. That it's really pressing that cardstock, you know, every way here and there, and your cardstock's cracking, a light mist of water will soften those paper fibers. But with a folder like this, I found that I didn't need to do any misting. It was just good. And then I used the Lisa Horton metallic inks that has everyone in a chokehold, rightfully so. Just this first little bit, like I said, I, this is all I've done with them. You know, I haven't really had a real chance to play with them, but my biggest impression was I just, yeah, I took them like this and I was just kind of rubbing them against like the raised images of the embossed folder. And it, I still get little streaky bits on the cardstock. I'm fine with that. You know, I'm not going for perfection here. I just wanted to add that pretty metallic shine. And my first impression is I did not need to heat set these like at all and they don't um, rub off. Uh, I find a lot of times with metallic inks, just because again, it's just sort of the nature of them that they need to be heat set. And even then sometimes with some metallics, I have had trouble like they just never dry because again, you're dealing with metallic pigments and they just like to be finicky. But yeah. I'm I'm impressed so far, but this this isn't a review, but it's just my first impression. So yeah, it's a set of three. You get a silver, a gold, and a copper. And I couldn't resist when I ordered them. These they are titled like they're they're labeled as limited edition, and I don't often like you know really pushing a product like this, especially one that you know, these technically don't have reinkers. However, I have heard through the rumor mill that reinkers are going to be made available for these next year. So they are not that limited edition. Like they'll they'll remain on the market and we'll be able to get reinkers. And that makes me even more happy. So we will see what the future brings in regards to all that. So after I had added the inks to the backgrounds. This one I decided I was like, they need splatter, of course. So I'm using my Altenew metallic watercolor palette. And with any brand of metallic watercolors, you need to add the water and either work it up really well with the brush or have patience, which you'll actually see the difference because I added the water to all three colors, the kind of whitey silver color, the gold, and then there's a coppery color. And the longer you let it sit, you know, the water can soak in and it softens the metallics. So I just stick it onto, or I just stuck it onto an acrylic block, stuck the background into my splat box, and then you just like flick the brush off the edge of the acrylic block. This is a trick I picked up from Christina Werner ages ago, years ago. Um, and again, it just depends on my mood. You know, sometimes I'll use my fan brush. Sometimes I'll do this. On a, it, No rhyme or reason. So did the, the like kind of white shimmery color for the silver one, gold on gold. And then this final one is the copper and see, because it sat the longest, I didn't have to sit and work at it. I did still play with it a little bit, you know, swirl my brush. It's satisfying. <laughs> like I'll just, I'll sit here when I'm, you know, working up the watercolors and it's like, oh, it's pretty. It's just pretty. I don't know. It's, I, I know I'm weird. I don't care. I'll just, yeah, the magpie in me. It's just like, ooh, shimmery. Anyway, love this copper color. So splattered that onto this background 
and then let all of this dry, which didn't take long other than the huge splotch I got on the red cardstock panel. That one took a little longer to dry. Not a big deal though, I'm actually gonna kind of cover it up with the main image. So I set all those aside and then I used just scraps of the same colors of cardstock. I ended up going like fully tone on tone with these. So I used the cardstock and I'm stamping one of the sentiments from that same stamp set doing the exact same thing. So anti-static powder, stamping the sentiment a couple times with clear embossing ink, and then using all those same colors of embossing powders on each of the different sentiments on each of the different cardstocks. And yeah, my silver and gold embossing powder I have, you know, in a larger container. I have more embossing powder of those than any normal human needs. Um, just over the years, I have had, I have so many containers that I just dumped them all into those little sandwich containers. But ones like this copper where I've only got the one, just the one little bottle, I just use it like I always used way back in the day with either a coffee filter or just a scrap piece of like copy paper. And then I just funnel it back into the container when I'm done and I'm good to go. And I did that for years. Like that was just how I used it. It was only the only reason I switched to the larger containers was, like I said, I ended up with just so many containers of embossing powder. And, you know, I do a lot of content. I do a lot of heat embossing. But yeah, average crafters, you don't need more than one container unless you're going to do like a bajillion cards. Anywho, after all the heat embossing, I die cut the sentiments with the coordinating wafer dye and then die cut more scraps of the, the well, or the leftover parts of the scrap cardstock with the dye, which I will show when I stack them together. And then for the main image, I put just thin foam squares on the back of this, and I'm going to pop this onto each of the uh, card fronts. And then the little bit left hanging off, I just snip that off with my scissors, and then I repeated the process on the other two. And then I also trimmed down just some panels of white cardstock to like three and three quarters by five inches, just slightly smaller than an A2 card. And these panels... Same thing, I used my anti-static powder tool on, and then I stamped another sentiment from that stamp set with the clear embossing ink, and then I'm using those same embossing powders. Keep everything matchy-matchy. If you wanted to keep it simple, you could just stamp the sentiment in black, but I didn't use any other inks other than the metallic inks. I could have technically stamped the sentiments with those metallic inks, but the heat embossing always, it's always going to be my jam. So, and I had it all sitting out, so why not? So, coated the sentiments with the three different colors of embossing powder, melted all of those. And then it was just a matter of making sure to match up the right embossing powder with the, the card front, which was simple. And then for the um, sentiments for the fronts of the cards, like I said, I die cut scraps of the same cardstock. And then I'm just going to stack these together with my craft tacky glue. So that'll build up the sentiment, give it a bit of dimension, because especially ones like this where the wafer die cuts like right around the sentiment, you know, like there's, it's all just nice and nice and tight like that. I do not like fiddling <laughs> with a bunch of foam, you know, adhesive, like trimming the little tiny bits. It's so much easier. Just die cut scraps, stack them together. Simple. So that's what I did. And then I adhered those to each of the, the card fronts. And then once those were done, my card bases... I'm going to use those. I'm going to score each of these at five and a half inches. And then I always reinforce the, the score line. All three of these cardstocks are, well, all of Simon's brand cardstocks are heavyweight. And yeah, Teflon bone folder for the win. I don't know why I was thinking about this while I was editing this video. I was like, I remember when the Teflon bone folders were released and I held out for a long time. I thought people were crazy. I was like, y'all are insane for paying this kind of money. Best purchase. <laughs> When I finally caved and got one, oh my goodness, oh big, such a big game changer. I love my Teflon bone folder, zero regrets on that thing. And again, I purchased mine, goodness, that was well over a decade ago at this point. Anyway, anyway, scored all my card bases, reinforced that fold, adhered the card front to the card base with craft tacky glue, and then on the inside made sure to match the inside panel with the right heat embossing color to the card. So the copper for the copper, silver for silver, gold for gold. So adhered all of those. And then of course I had matching embellishments, which yeah, for those that are unaware, I have multiple lifetimes. I have so much, it's it's kind of insane. Anyway, I have these Trinity stamps, um, matte 
metallic confetti. So I have a matte metallic silver, a bronze, and a gold. Like it was meant to be. Which is funny, because I had forgot I even <laughs> I forgot I had them. And then when I was digging through my stash, I was like, oh yeah, this is perfect. Perfect. Love it. So adhered some of those to each of these card fronts, just kind of arranged them. And once, like I always do, once I figured out the arrangement on the first one, I copied it on the other two. So it was quick and simple. And then just picked them up with my little embellishment wand, put on put down a dab of glue, pressed them into place, let the glue dry. And these cards are complete. So we've got metallic and shine, heat embossing and metallic ink and splatter and 3D embossing folder and all the things. All the things and yet still technically fairly simple. So like I mentioned in the intro, I'll have a link to my holiday playlist in the end screen at the very end of the video. And then if you want to check out any of the products I used, etc., those will be listed and linked in the description box below. I will also link to my blog post. The blog post is a little easier to navigate because there's the photos and picture links and all the things. That will be linked below as well. Thank you all so very much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed. I very much appreciate the thumbs up and comments. It helps a ton. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much to my amazing Patreon supporters. For anyone that might be interested in joining my Patreon community and supporting me, the link to my Patreon is in the description box below the video. For everyone else, as always, thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And here's a couple other videos for you to check out in case you miss them. Bye!